past three blooms we've had here at the greenhouse have all been new blooms for a plant. So the first time that any of those plants in particular have flowered. The bloom this year is unique in that it is a rebloom of one of the plants that we had in 2021. Typically giant corpse flowers will take three to four years at least in between bloom cycles. This one is a bit unusual. This one decided to flower after only one vegetative or one leaf cycle. So it must be very happy here. This plant, like the other three that have bloomed here, are all from Ohio State. The corpse flower is unique for a number of reasons. So the main one is that it is the world's largest unbranched inflorescence. So an inflorescence is a collection of flowers. This collection of flowers will be about seven to eight feet tall, um, sometimes a little bit shorter, but still very, very large. Another thing that makes it unique is it's endemic only to Western Sumatra. So it's native to a very narrow geographical range, not found naturally outside of that area. In general, when we're trying to predict the size that a fully mature open flower will be, we'll be looking at the tuber size. So each time these plants go dormant, we'll be measuring the tuber, weighing it, seeing how much it's grown during the last growth cycle, and using that to interpret generally how large it will be when it flowers. So our bloom last year, Diva, was 67 and a half inches, or around there, when it fully opened. We're expecting this bloom to be slightly smaller for a number of reasons. The first time this plant bloomed in 2021, it was around 57 inches, so it was a little bit shorter to start with. And then since this is a rebloom and it has only had one vegetative cycle, it may not have been able to amass enough energy to produce a giant, giant flower. But it'll still be very large nonetheless. So there are a couple of factors we can look at when we're trying to determine when these corpse flowers are going to bloom. One thing we look at is its growth cycle and how fast it's growing each day. So we are doing daily measurements and once it starts to slow down, that can be an indicator that has reached full size and then bloom may be imminent. Another feature we look for is the spathe, the outer ruffled part, to start to turn purple and start to peel away from the central spadex. Currently in the greenhouse, we have around 12 different specimens of giant corpse flowers from three different genetic lines or three different genetic sources. Luckily right now, this is the only one that is in flower, um, that is producing a bud. We're expecting the rest to all be vegetative or leaf cycles. We do have some that are coming out of dormancy right now, so it is a little early to tell, but based on the size of the tubers when we weighed them, it would be unlikely to have another flower after this. The fun part about these plants is to see the type of people that will come and see them. They are not just plant nerds, because it is a weird plant, so definitely you do have the plant nerds group of people that come to it, but it's also a bucket list item. They don't occur very often, they only bloom for 24 to 36 hours, so unless you live near one, you're probably not going to get to see it, um, so it's a cool opportunity. Having the opportunity to grow these in a greenhouse is unique for a couple reasons. One, they're just fascinating plants to watch the growth cycle, watch them go dormant, leaf out, um, happen over and over again until eventually they produce a flower. Getting to talk to visitors about these plants as well, even when they're not in flower, is a really cool experience. Um, even if they're not blooming, they still produce a 12 to 15 foot tall leaf, which is very unusual. So we get to talk to them about the life cycle, how they're endangered, how uh, we work, help with conservation, things like that by growing them here at the greenhouse.